some of us stood before the congregation and gave what we call the faith walks. Basically, it's a testimonial of uh, how we came to faith and how we came to be a part of First Covenant Church. Uh, I was included in a group of people who did that. So, some of what I'm about to say is taken from the testimonial that I gave when it was my turn to speak about my faith. So, if some of this sounds familiar uh, to you, it's because you've heard, you have heard it before. I did not have a spiritual upbringing. Um, growing up, we did not uh, have a relationship with God or a, a faithful belief. Uh, I, I had always believed that there was a higher power over us, but I didn't give much thought to its nature or purpose. Growing up, we went to church here and there, but uh, I had no interest uh, in religion or seeking a relationship with God. Uh, most times I ignored what was being said out of uh, not really wanting to be there. Uh, so, even after experiencing the hardships in life that, uh, that, that come with life that we all experience, I didn't really seek the strength that comes with belief and faith. I didn't consider it to be an option. Uh, I was my own person and I could deal with stuff on my own in my own way. And I was happy going on like that, not thinking that there was anything missing in my life. Until, uh, so my friend's wife went to this church, and uh, she started picking up my kids and bringing them here. So my kids had been coming here for several weeks, and, and Sunday mornings became an opportunity for my wife and I to get stuff done, because we didn't have the kids. Um, so, but inevitably, my wife and I started to come in if my kids had a skit or a program or something that they were a part of. But uh, I wanted nothing to do with singing or praying uh, or, or any of that. However, as, as I spent more time here, I became more and more comfortable with the people, the place, and the whole experience. Many times, as I sat there, and I started to actually listen to Pastor Bruce, I said, me! He's talking about me! About what's going on in my life, and he's telling me how I can look to God's Word to help me get through it. I refer to that as hitting the nail on the head. So, I didn't start coming to this church because of Pastor Bruce, but Pastor Bruce and his ministry is a big part of why I stayed and what led me to becoming a Christian. Uh, Pastor Bruce's sermons weren't just a Bible study. They were about real life and the trials and tribulations that we all face and how we can rely on God's words to help us through. So many times, Pastor Bruce has hit the nail on the head. Not just with me, but with others in our congregation. It never, I never cease to be fascinated and amazed by his ability to do that. And it didn't stop with the service. Pastor Bruce is, Pastor Bruce is urging is uh, a big part of me becoming involved uh, in not just attending this church, but serving it as well, uh, from being on committees to being on council, and ultimately serving in leadership roles. So as I was writing this, uh, I started to become concerned that this might seem to be more about me than it is about Pastor Bruce. Uh, the point I'm trying to make here is that Pastor Bruce is the main reason I am me today regarding my spirituality and my faith. Without this church, the whole family, led the way by Pastor Bruce and Megan, I can honestly say that I don't know where I would be today in regards to my faith. We all know the comparison of the pastor to a shepherd 
but the congregation has the flock, right? Well, Pastor Bruce is not a shepherd. He's a farmer. Pastor Bruce is a farmer, and we are his seeds. Luke chapter 4, verses 3 through 8. Listen, a farmer went out to sow his seed. As he was scattering the seed, some fell along the path, and the birds came and ate it up. Some fell on rocky places where it did not have much soil. It sprang up quickly because the soil was shallow. But when the sun came up, the plants were scorched, and they withered because they had no root. Other seed fell among thorns, which grew up and choked the plants, so that they did not bear grain. Still other seed fell on good soil. It came up, grew, and produced a crop, some multiplying 30, some 60, some 100 times. So, Pastor Bruce and Megan, here's hoping and praying that the seeds you've sown over the years here at First Covenant Church will continue to grow and sprout and produce and multiply. Happy retirement. So I've got one more one more thing to read. This comes from uh, Garth McGrath. Uh, Garth McGrath is our conference superintendent of the Great Lakes Conference of the Evangelical Covenant Church. Garth uh, couldn't be here today because he had a, a conference, but he did send a letter, and I'm going to read it. Dear Bruce and Megan, on behalf of the Great Lakes Conference of Churches and the Evangelical Covenant Church, Thank you both for your ministry in and through First Covenant Church since 2003. <clears throat> your steady, faithful presence in Ashtabula has been a blessing to members of the congregation and to people in the surrounding area as you have entered into their lives, cared for them, shared the love of Jesus, preached the gospel, taught the scriptures, lived the kingdom of God kind of life that Jesus taught, and put the interests of others ahead of your own so that God would be glorified and people's deepest needs could be met. You have done all of this through what many consider to have been some of the most challenging years of ministry that the Christian church in North America has ever experienced. Well done, good and faithful servants, well done. As you transition to the next chapter of your life, Wherever it may take you, know that you do so with the gratitude and blessing of the Great Lakes Conference and the larger Evangelical Covenant Church. Respectfully, Garth McGrath, Superintendent of the Great Lakes Conference. So now we're going to open it up. Anybody who feels moved is welcome to come up and share regarding their experiences with Pastor Bruce and Megan. If you have a funny story, a remembrance, an anecdote, whatever, you're welcome to come on up as, as you feel need to do so. Thank you. It seems like it wasn't that long ago uh, when uh, Pastor Bruce and Megan came to Ashtabula, the boys came to our house and we spent the day, Jim and I, entertaining the boys. We took them to White Turkey and had a fun day. And then uh, Pastor Bruce also, um, when my father was very sick, he would come visit. He assisted in my father's funeral. He married my brother and his wife. They did their wedding. So Pastor Bruce has been a part of my family also, not just here, me and our church family. And we just want to um, thank, thank Pastor Bruce on behalf of Jim and I and my mom and dad and Brothers, sister, and everybody. Thank you. We love you. Well, um, I first met Megan and Shirt at. Um, work. We happened, um, I'm sure you guys have all heard this story, but it is so unusual to have two nurses go to the break room at the same time. It's almost impossible, but we did, and we got to know each other, and I shared with her some problems I was having with my family with a uh, relationship issue with one of our sons, and um, she prayed with me and just became a real support person. 
Well, from that first meeting, she invited me to her Bible study where I met some of you. Sharon was there. I never knew Sharon went to the church, but there were quite a few people that I knew, and Kathy. And so we had a nice Bible study on Saturdays. And so from there, it just kind of continued. I was invited to church. I came a little. I stayed home a little. And eventually, I became a little bit more of a full-time church churchgoer. And then I tried to get Jim to come, and Jim met Megan and Bruce, and um, he told Megan, you know, I like you guys, you guys, you know, you're great people, I'm just not interested in church. And Megan and Bruce told him, that's okay, we love you, you come when, whenever you feel like you'd like to. Well, lo and behold, he began to come, and if it hadn't been for Megan and Bruce and their ministry, um, I don't think I'd have the peace I have now. They stood with Jim. They uh, ministered to him. His heart softened. Our families reconciled before um, Jim passed away. And it was, I just would not have the peace I have today if it weren't for Pastor Bruce and Megan. And that is such a priceless thing. And I'm just so thankful that that chance meeting led led to the friendship we have with them and they certainly have a wonderful ministry and I'm going to miss you guys but hopefully we'll still keep in touch but I'll miss your ministry but you have a wonderful retirement So at 7.30, <laughs> we got a Lakeshore Park. <laughs> and you can continue your ministry with me and to others. Uh, my dad told me that, uh, you know, I was concerned about what am I going to do when I retire? And that, that don't worry about it. <laughs> so you'll find plenty to do. <laughs> so when they can get your honeydew list done, it ought to be keep you busy here. Because you might not remember, but when you came to town, you didn't have a sweeper. They helped you get a sweeper. <clears throat> okay. Later on, I had got you. I got you a bike. Helped you get a bicycle. So now we can put them both to good use. <laughs> so I'm kind of trying to plan a trip for next summer, and something you might want to think about. Because I'm sure I can get you in the shape. <laughs> I guess you know. I'm thinking that all of us, me included, there's a certain amount of people that we always look up to. For me, with my father. <laughs> My father-in-law, a old baseball coach, and a couple other teachers, my Boy Scout master, who taught me a lot and still does to this day, even though he's 95. But in many untold ways, Bruce has taught me, and I think taught all of us, so many things that... Uh, you might not even know. And that's why I want you to keep on walking and start biking with me so I can continue to teach. That's, that's Bruce. Thank time I saw Pastor Bruce. My husband was alive at the time. Can everybody hear me? Mm -hmm. yeah, I guess they can hear me in Jersey. They can hear me. <laughs> anyway, 
I remember the first time I met Pastor, well, I didn't meet him, my husband met Pastor Bruce. He stopped at the house because they were putting the tower up back here or something, and he had to get approval or something. And my husband comes back and he goes, I just met the nicest guy in the whole world. And I says, he did. He goes, yeah, it was the pastor from across the street. I said, well, you want to go across the street? He goes, no. Because <laughs> <laughs> we had our own thing when it came to the way we prayed. So then when he passed, Incha didn't see him for a while. And she comes and knocks on the door and she asks me about my husband. And I said, you know, I told her that he had crossed over. And she said to me, would you like to come to church with me? And I looked at her and I said, you know what? Yes, I would love to come here. So the first service I came here, I met all these, excuse me, fantastic, beautiful souls that I haven't seen in a long time. Not saying I haven't had others in my life, but in one establishment, it was like a blessing to me. And then Pastor Bruce got up there and he sang. And I, I went up to him afterwards. I said, you know what? You have a voice of a cantor. And he looked at me because I wish I did. I said, no, you really, really do. And a cantor is a person that sings in um, a synagogue. It's part of a Jewish tradition. They sing the prayer before and the prayer after a service. And to be a cantor, you have to have a voice. So when I told him that, he got his biggest smile on his face, and I said, you have it. Don't lose it. And I've, I've just been thanking God because then he spoke. And his words ring like bells in your ears. So whoever heard Pastor Bruce speak, they got a blessing with every word that came out of his mouth. And the blessing was to be good to each other, as he has been to us. And God bless you, Pastor Bruce. I have not been privileged to be a member of this church for as long as many as you, for as long as Pastor Bruce and Megan have been here. But I will have to tell you to take a, a line from Sam, it's not really about me, but I was church shopping, so to speak. I had had a couple of unfortunate circumstances in previous churches, and I was looking for a different church to go to. And I didn't know anyone here, or I didn't think I knew anyone here, but I was driving by one day and God said, to me, I felt like you did. This is where I want you to be. And so I came to church here, and everyone has been very welcoming to me. The one thing that I do like to say about Pastor Bruce and Megan is they are very encouraging. They are very loving and very warm. They encourage me, and I'm sure they encourage you, to do the things that you feel you are good at. <clears throat> Some places where I've been, I can only say my spirit was stifled because I couldn't do what I wanted to do. But Pastor Bruce has always encouraged me to spread my wings and fly. And Megan has always been there for you for me, whenever I wanted to talk, whenever I had a question, I truly appreciate her leading our worship services. Then she joined the worship team. Um, and you all know, of course, that Pastor is here every Sunday, except for when he gets a, a rare day off. Um, but that is not all he does. Behind the scenes, he does much more that a lot of us don't even realize. Um, and he does it willingly, without asking. He showed up at the hospital when my mother was in, in hospice care, or maybe even before she went in hospice care. And I didn't even 
I didn't expect him because he didn't know my mom and I hadn't been been here that long. He came and he prayed with her and with me. And um, as far as some of the behind the scenes stuff, he serves on committees and maybe even on ad hoc members. But I was here one day and he's in here mopping the floor. Now you wouldn't consider that to be the job of pastor or or the work of the pastor. But he was doing that because he loves the Lord, he loves our church, and he was doing what he wanted to do to serve him. Not putting himself up on a pedestal because I'm the pastor, I'm too good to do all that. Pastor is a human being just like the rest of us. Every single one of us. His messages were scriptural, but they also reminded us that he's a human being and we should not put him on a pedestal any more than, than he would do. And because he is a human being and he is a Christian, we can recognize that we're human beings and in our failures and frailty, we can be Christians too. And I'm going to miss both Pastor Bruce and Bacon. That, uh, the one thing I really admire about Pastor Bruce is that he doesn't pretend like he's perfect. He has a lot of, you know, problems, and, <laughs> and I think that's really inspiring because a lot of people pretend like they have nothing wrong. And but when you talk to him, you get the sense that he has problems too, but he's dealing with them in a healthy way. And I've always really looked up to that, and that's something that I'll carry for the rest of my life. Thank you. So Linda kind of reminded me of uh, when she was talking about Pastor Bruce mopping the floor, and I think one of my favorite memories was when Bruce and Mary Hedberg and I did Mission Detroit, and we spent a couple days in a very uh, po uh, poverty-stricken area, neighborhood, uh, cleaning, cleaning up garbage and stuff, and we stunk, and we were filthy, it was hot, it was summer, we were all sweaty and filthy, and a lot of the people that were participating in it, somehow they went and got cleaned up before the worship service on it. But, uh, well, please, I don't know, I don't remember where you were staying, Pastor Bruce, but Mary and I were staying, like, way out. So there was no way we were getting cleaned up. And, uh, but anyway, that was a really uh, neat experience to have Pastor Bruce uh, there down. I mean, we were uh, serving the people, doing what we what we needed to do to, to try to make a difference in the world, but uh, not being afraid to get really dirty and, and disgusting that, those couple of days, but that, that was really a, a neat memory that I had. Thank everyone for their comments, for their remembrances, and for their uh, expressions of gratitude uh, for Pastor Bruce and Megan. I would echo all of those myself, except I don't think I was with Cheryl and Mary. <laughs> and Pastor Bruce you would remember if you were. But at this point, uh, I'm getting the feeling that everyone who wanted to speak has had a chance to speak. And so, um, uh, we would like to present uh, Pastor Bruce and Megan with a special remembrance uh, from the church family. So, if you would come forward. Mm -hmm. 
I've been kindly reminded, Pastor Bruce, that yours is the bag with the peppermint. Okay, great. Um, <laughs> you have a lot of spirits. And Megan, this is for you. I don't know if it's body flat or not, but um, if you would, um, when we started planning this event, we had no idea where we were going or what we were going to do, except we wanted to have a party for you. And when it came to thinking about an appropriate gift from the church family, I mean, you probably got all kinds of books. You don't need any more crosses, probably, or that sort of thing. <laughs> so some of us on the committee uh, were thinking, you have a lovely home uh, right on the shores of Lake Erie. You have that nice little sunroom that overlooks the lake. And so we thought we would try to pick something that would be very appropriate for you in that set. So, uh, Pastor Bruce, here's the peppermint. Okay. <laughs> Megan, uh, yeah. Megan, you uh, always were doing the flowers and uh, at, in the sanctuary and so on. And uh, you were a Sunday school teacher and so on. And so uh, we chose that verse for you that the the, the flower they, the grass withers the flower fades but the word of our God shall live for stand forever so that was particularly um, precious verse for us to have for you to remember so when you're reclining in your retirement <laughs> uh, on a cold winter <laughs> afternoon out on the sunny uh, sunroom that you have yeah. um, you can wrap yourself in your uh, in your throat and you can remember us I did get this little bit of an explanation from the, the place that that made them it says and I'm going to make it plural because there's two of them uh, our lives can be thought of as a tapestry but all of our relationships and experiences woven together to make that which is us the image of your tapestry is woven with six individual colors Green, blue, red, black, gold, black, and white. When we are young, we are like the green thread, learning as we go. Later, the blue sky fills our life. In our prime, we progress and grow like the red thread, and then we enter our golden years. In the end, the darkness gives way to the light during the final part of our journey. This light tribute tapestry is for you. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. <laughs> I'd like to say I came up with that thought myself, but it came in close in the in the quilt or the crumb. So I thought, oh how perfect. That was a little god gift. <laughs> 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 it's it's a Okay. Very, very Did you give Megan the mic for a Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, presentation of gifts to Pastor Bruce and Megan. <laughs> Remarks by Pastor Bruce and Megan. <laughs> 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 Take your place. Yeah. <laughs> First of all, I want to thank everybody for all of your love and support. Um, this this uh, feast that you put on and uh, it's is just so beautiful um so thank you so very much um and all of your heartfelt remarks um and i'm glad that jean didn't tell you uh what you said <laughs> <laughs> uh, but um i do i really thank you um for your love and um we are praying for you we pray for you all the time um, and we know that God has a plan for you, and uh, this is not the end, it's the beginning. And so uh, we expect to hear wonderful things from you. So thank you for the privilege of allowing us to be here and um, for sharing the love of the Lord together.
Thank you. You uh, are really a special people, truly loved. Uh, when I was a little kid, I was raised Catholic, and I told my mom I wanted to be a priest. She said, are you nuts? <laughs> That's a terrible idea. But I kept it in my mind and uh, felt called to do ministry. And uh, I never thought I would. Honestly, I didn't think I would. I ended up just working and really happy with my job. And uh, turned 40, and Megan knew the story that I wanted to be a pastor. And she said, now's the time. Quit your job. Go to school. So... You people are, have been in my life since I was like eight. I've been praying for you people. Not knowing who you were, or where you would, would be, or how I could help, or what anything. Except, this is it. This is what God had for me in my life. You. And I'm grateful for every minute. Every conversation. Every person. It is, it is a story that is eternal. Because it's a story of love. Commitment. And God is eternal and God does great things, even with people like me, ordinary, struggling. I needed to go to school, I did it myself. I needed to go to seminary, I did it all myself. With no denomination behind me, I just knew that something would happen somewhere. Confidence, God started it, God would finish it. And He did. And you are the finished product. And I could not be happier or prouder. Our God is great. He does great things. Amen. Amen. And that box there is a box of cards. And that tree is a gift. Who did the tree? It's beautiful. It's really folded money. Yeah. <laughs> Sharon and... Shauna made the tree. It's beautiful. Thank you. Yeah. Um, you can say the Shusha's name. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah. Oh, I thought I was being given some stage directions. So uh, this kind of brings us to the end of uh, what we're doing here. But on your table, you will see some little cards. Uh, you may know those things, um, or if you're not, the card, uh, the card is there to help you. Uh, I'd like us, uh, if we are, if, you, if you're able to, if you would stand, and we will do the uh, Mitzvah Benediction. Um, it is biblical. It's from the book of Jeremiah. What does it say on the card? Am I correct? Genesis. Oh, Genesis. Well, the Jim was correct. Yeah. All right. Then after we finish the Mizpah benediction, we will sing, Blessed be the tithe at vine. Okay. All right. May the Lord wash between me and thee while we are absent one from the other. And then, uh, and now it's going to play through one. Pretty familiar to me. for supporting uh, our committee and doing this, and we're glad that you're all here, but we also hope that you are glad that you were here.